Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the OK Grognard Show. It is Friday, May 22nd, 2020, 9.30 a.m. Central, in beautiful Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. And uh, today we're going to have a little look at one part of building virtual tabletop adventures, and that's doing a little map selection with an eye toward what they can do for you in the during gameplay. So Dyson Logos has been putting out maps for I don't know, almost a decade under the Creative Commons license. A number of them available as as um, uh, available for commercial products, which are the ones that I collect and sit on. They're the reason why I've been a Patreon supporter of his for, I think it's coming up on five years. If you like Dyson Logo stuff, you should definitely back his Patreon. Just throw a buck or two. Do what I do. Throw five bucks a map. It isn't a lot. If you use any of them, it's well worth it. And for him, well, it's not a lot for you monthly. It adds up for him and uh, keeps him producing these maps. So it's good that way. One thing, though, that he does more recently, I think just in the last couple of years, is he takes maps. He... Uh, Post them as PNG files, and uh, I'm going to use a program I often use called IrfanView. I R F A N capital V I E W. It's a fairly straightforward. Uh, graphics image uh, program for messing with images. I, I don't use it for too much stuff. Let me just pop this open here. Okay, that's where it's at. And let me do this. And that's that there. Okay, just checking a few things. Making sure I got some settings correct. Um, so here's one. So I've got a big old folder full of Dyson Logos maps, right? And there's a lot of dungeons and towns and cities and towers. And there's a ton of inns and taverns. And the first one, B-E-H-K-O-N, -E Beckon Inn. Uh, one of the problems with... I can't open this file directly as I have saved it using paint and uh, sure I use Photoshop for a lot of stuff but for simple fast things I use your fan view and I use paint just to uh, do some quick stuff without having to uh, tax my system it's an old problem I have Mainly to do with uh, with uh, always having um, lesser computers and uh, having uh, software from Adobe like Photoshop up on a system that was ill-equipped to run it with uh, very big files, so. I would resort to just using Airfan View. You can see the size of this. It's a 1200 DPI. It's a five digits and pixels both ways. It's big. If I try to open this with paint, it'll just tell me no. It's not. It's too big for the that program. And I like using paint. So generally, and I've already done this, I would chop this down by half. And then I would just save it 
and then I would go to open it in paint and hopefully it would open at that point I've done this already so I will now open it up in paint and you'll notice when I do open it up in paint it's still huge but not so big that it can't open first thing I do because I'm going to be using this for some other purpose that that name doesn't need to be attached to I clean off the name I scrub off his um, patreon link which is important to be there if uh, if it's on his website so that if people are just downloading stuff willy-nilly they are aware of uh, whence it came but for our purposes we're cleaning it up we're using it for other things so we want to clear some of that stuff off now notice top layer or top level upstairs the grid is only where there is actual flooring so that's the roof of that other building of the stables so we don't need a grid on that we don't need a grid on the outside because you're 10 feet 12 feet above the ground level right um, so that's a good thing notice this so we got stairs and we've got this is it a wall is it a railing well it's light it's not dark so it's probably just a railing notice it starts there so this upper level right and it corresponds on the axis such that it's over top of this common room here right and probably just a loft it opens uh, these guest rooms can open up into it we've got one bed two four six only eight rooms up top side down below we've got two four six eight ten twelve thirteen this one only has one bed a little more expensive probably to get your own room so thirteen below and two four six seven eight above which makes 21 so these are things to take note of while you're looking over um, looking over maps for adventures uh, Red Barn Games suggests uh, how about using a free program like GIMP sure if uh, if you don't want to shell out for Adobe I use Adobe for all sorts of other things though um, you know I'm using it for InDesign I'm using it for Acrobat I'm using it for Photoshop I'm using it for audition for audio uh, files I'm using it for Premiere Pro for video files and they all integrate with one another quite easily um, there's a lot of uh, intuitive design between them uh, as far as uh, tools are concerned there is uh, I don't mind paying a monthly subscription some people like to quote unquote own the programs I don't think you ever really do sooner or later your computers going down and files are no longer to, no longer gonna work you know I, I, at some point you do this dance where you're spending more time trying to make something that is outdated work uh, then it would be worth your while to do so you know what I shell out once a month I pay like 50 bucks 57 bucks I think a month to have an Adobe suite and uh, just do the full ride with it yep give some a lot of people start there for sure um, Airfan View also a free program you can download like I said it's a simple program for making quick adjustments in in uh, image files so to uh, paint you know if you're a uh, Windows person then uh, this is the one that you just get with every computer you ever owned right and it works just fine there is a Windows 3d and some people use that too but 
this works just fine for just straight out two dimensional images and it's what I use and it's what I'm showing people today so uh, we could probably mention a thousand programs doesn't you know doesn't get us on uh, on task here which is to talk about grabbing maps to use in adventures and what you're looking for I'm just describing what programs I'm actually using to get that job done so again 22 is that what we said uh, 8 and 13 21 beds in this uh, tavern so or in this inn because uh, what's the dis what's the distinction a tavern is a drinking place an inn is a drinking place that has has rooms for let like a hotel like a motel but with a tavern attached to it right that's an inn so those are what you're looking for this in this case we're looking at an inn and so what do we want to consider here well Dyson likes to put outhouses out there so we've got four seats out of doors we've got a decent sized kitchen with a hearth that extends through both sides uh, out into the tavern proper and into the kitchen so it could be used from both sides and there's a always some interesting adventure possibilities when you've uh, got a pass through from one room to another so two two openings over here separate hearth for this common room uh, out here we've got uh, stables available for one two three four five six stalls for six seven eight nine maybe more than one in here so maybe as many as twelve if they get along maybe you need a goat somewhere they always say uh, some people like to have goats at race tracks to keep supposedly keep horses calm I don't know if that's just a superstition or if that's a a true thing um, when you're looking at the map make notes of where the doors are front door right is it way over here down the lower right we've got a, an exit from the back of the tavern we've got an exit from the common room we've got an exit from the kitchen all doors and we don't have any exits down this long hallway we've got a lot of windows so you know if there was a fire or what have you these people would not be trapped in their room if this hallway went on fire. I think it's worth noting, though, there are just windows along this hallway. There aren't any doors. So nobody's going to stay the night and then just walk out a door and go grab their horse out of the stable and leave if they, uh, if they still owe money to the innkeeper. So, you know, think of uh, when you're looking at maps like this, think of little potential scenarios that could come up like that now I'm not saying you have to encourage the players to try to dine and dash or bed and bash I don't know take off um, but maybe they're seated at a table and they see somebody that looks a little suspicious and they put two and two together and realize that person skating on their bill and maybe they get in good with the innkeeper because they warn him of that or they go and catch him or they just go and have a little talk with him and say come on back inside and pay your bill like a good person and maybe being in good with the innkeeper gets them some information they would not have been able to get otherwise so sometimes hooks don't have to be so and so tells you about a thing do you do it do you do you take them up on it? Do you agree to do? Sometimes opportunities can be created by the players because of circumstances that you've described. Because there's stuff going on all the time. When you're running a game, you don't uh, you don't necessarily have to spoon feed hooks to players. Sometimes it's better if players 
create opportunities because of the circumstances that are surrounding them. So if you've got a dynamic world, if you're running a sandbox like I often do, almost always do, and you just throw all these different things out there, um, a guy comes in from the outhouse and uh, he's got something on his shoe. What do you do about it? And what's it look like? Well, it's a piece of parchment. So you find out that uh, <clears throat> the parchment that he uh, doesn't realize is valuable is a map or a document. Now, maybe it's not completely intact because, well, he had it in the outhouse. He was taking some paper out there with him for something. Morning, Lost Nomad. Thanks for joining us. And uh, you're just creating opportunities. And this is what I love in part uh, when I'm looking for, looking at maps and uh, figuring out how I might use them is the... Uh, is the many scenarios that they help inspire just because of the, the layout. You know, I put those players here because there's no door down here and it created an opportunity for them to be helpful to the innkeeper. And then because they're sitting by the back door, I thought of this other scenario here. Now they also have a view in this way, right? There's these two long tables. Could be for a large group, maybe they uh, don't pe let pe you know, who's going to let two people go sit down in here when there are other tables out here, if you know you've got a large group coming, right? This is like any restaurant or tavern might uh, might uh, be interested in making sure that their tables are used most efficiently they get a large group coming in they don't want their larger tables filled with ones and twos people now maybe they have a couple of tables like the one over near the hearth where they'll let ones and twos sit as long as they don't mind sharing a table red barn looking at a french medieval roadside coaching inn a little like a three musketeer style king's road country inn indeed Then I'm also looking at things like this room down here. We've got a couple of curtains. Curtaining off three beds and one outside of those curtains. All right, and a little table. So this is like a, uh, a little suite after a fashion. But what would be a good uh, good use for this? This is a, maybe a servant's and maybe some nobleman and his two children are in these beds behind the curtains and they have their servants sit outside stay outside in the room but outside of the curtain as if there's some prestige to uh, just having a curtain so to the upstairs you've got to go through these tables that's worth noting this hearth here right above below this hearth here so we've got these uh, two hearths have a shared chimney that's worth noting the stairs up now does this is this just a handrail I think so that's what I would say you can just look right over that even through it so too then this railing would not be a solid wall but would be something that things could drop Right, so and so drops a couple of coins, and one of them rolls around and bring falls down. And where does it fall? Well, it falls right there next to the adventurers we established were over there, right? Bunk beds at the cheaper cost could be could be a common room, could be a room. I'm not sure about the curtains, but definitely you could have. Uh, a room where you've got four bunk beds in here so you really are squeezing eight people into this room um, 
I'm not sure you throw a table and chairs in a room like that, though. So I'm not sure. I think we'd squeeze an extra pair of beds in there if, if this was going to be the, the cheapest digs, right? Maybe. I don't know. Um, when you know, having having more than just the li the minimum amount of furniture suggests that uh, it's an upgrade rather than a downgrade. I think, in my mind, doesn't need to be. What is this little table next to the bed in here? And a bureau or a chest of some sort, right? Little table, a couple of a couple of beds. So this one here, interesting. I can stay up here, but I can have a meeting with several people. Can they come and go through the window? Can we drop down a little rope ladder so we can have a secret meeting up here? I don't know. Possible. Somebody may be staying here. Once this is cleared out, can slide down the hallway and come in for the secret meeting. So we've got this fenced-in yard back here, too. This is interesting. Just because of its shape, it's a little weird. Um, sorry, not a fenced-in yard. That's just the downstairs below there. Um, so we've got no fences around here. So roof to the outhouse, roof to the stables. All right, this is interesting. We don't have a... Uh, Something I might add to a map like this would be a little fencing and gates. Because I think you want to have a corral area. If you're going to have open stables, and granted th these aren't necessarily open we aren't showing any doors but you could say there are stable doors here nevertheless you do want some some corral fencing so maybe it's off off map maybe there's a larger corral area you could say it is anywho um, kitchen here we said Probably the butchering table on its own, right? And by the back door where it's easier to clean in and out. Prep tables, whatever. Um, cook sleeps in the kitchen. Oh, you think this is a bed over here? Mm, maybe. It's uh, not impossible. Uh, really drawn as a bed, I don't think. Certainly a possibility. So, so we're thinking in st terms of staff then. It is a large place. Um, let's see. Let's have a quick, uh, quick seat count. Four, five, four, four, three, four. So we've got 24 there. Down below, shall we call this 10 and 10? 6 and 6 and 6 and 6. So you've got another 44 there. We've got 24 up top. That gives us 68. What are we calling these 8? 2, 4, 6, 8. Let's add 8 more. We'll go up to 76. We'll add six for each of these and call them 88 92 98 104 108 109 110 111 12 13 14 15 so you know a lot of people can sit in here right you can really fill this place up little seat by the back door 116 then I guess if we're counting every chair but they'd be shoulder to shoulder they'd definitely be squeezed in and we already said we've only got 21 not counting the potential for bunk beds 
we've only got 21 um, chairs around the place so or uh, beds um, but taverns are what taverns are they are local watering holes that also cater to the traveler so the majority of people that are going to be here drinking and carousing are going to be uh, are going to be locals who are uh, out for a meal and and a drink or whatever and uh, then you have to start thinking too about what's the mix how much uh, how much do the travelers what's the attitude of locals to travelers the, are they sympathetic to the innkeeper do they realize he's got to make a coin he's got to make some coin and uh, so they're welcoming to people that are traveling do they like to hear stories from abroad is it a is it a kingdom where uh, people that are traveling that are tr heading through from place to place are looked upon with suspicion certainly that's the uh, that's the way to increase the level of tension and potential conflict is to always look at things as contentious but you know if everything's contentious then you've got nothing to scale it to how contentious is something so if we have a baseline if in our adventure there is a place where people can be safe and comfortable and happy and welcomed then once you get into conflict and you get into contentiousness you get to decide how contentious compared to our welcoming environment our headquarters our quiet safe place and of course you know you can ramp it up all the way to life or death situations anywhere from uh, well we're welcome but you know what this guy looks a little suspicious he just keeps looking over his shoulder he looks happy enough but looks a little nervous all right all right this guy on the other hand he's get his hood up he's obviously trying to keep his face hidden he's doing everything he can he's got his back to the room he seated himself at a table so that he can keep an eye on the front door but not be seen by people that are sitting in most of the rest of the room let's say he sat himself down here or maybe over here or maybe he sat himself here so he can keep an eye on the front door and the kitchen and be by the hearth but what does he put his back against maybe he's not so worried about just random stabberinos I don't know so lots of things to consider but I can see we've pushed the time on the recording so I think we'll leave it there for today and we will take the beckon in and know that we've got some things we can do with it. You can find that on DysonLogos.com, of course. Be sure to support his Patreon, as I say once again. Thank you very much for showing up today. I want to uh, reiterate most of the dice that have gone out over the last six weeks have found their home. I'm still waiting to hear from one or two people. Patches. One is on its way to New Zealand, one set. The other set will be drawing for on Monday. And I know Mark and Red Barnes Games will be happy that we're doing the drawing. Of course, uh, that's on Monday, right? Uh, this weekend, starting tomorrow, Con of Champions. If you're not busy, keep you busy and it'll be fun there'll be seminars there'll be uh,
painting and uh, cartography seminars. There'll be running games seminars. There'll be games to jump in, board games, role-playing games, all sorts of fun stuff. The rest of the schedule, this was building virtual tabletop adventures on Friday. Tomorrow we'll do a quick one on a cartoon, the 9th. Animated Dungeons & Dragons cartoon from a DM perspective. Sunday in the Rules Retrospective, the news and giveaway on Monday. Then we'll get back in Tuesday with cartography and role building. Campaign discussion, mostly about Grimwald on Wednesday. Get back to crafting and painting, continuing on those catapults on Thursday. I want to thank everybody who popped into the chat here and uh, following the Twitch stream, and I will also say thank you very much to anybody catching up with this on YouTube. Please be sure to subscribe and hit the like, hit the thumbs up or the thumbs down if you feel like it. YouTube doesn't care. YouTube YouTube thinks any engagement is good engagement. So you give me a thumbs up, you give me a thumbs down. It makes no difference to YouTube. I get the same... Uh, quote-unquote credit for it so thank you for your interest either way you go have a great day have a great weekend hopefully i'll see some of you at the kind of champions bye bye